Welcome to this eLearn Security video lesson on Using Shellbags Explorer. In this video, I will explain Shellbag Explorer and how it can help us analyze shellbags. Shellbags are extremely useful evidence that's found on Windows machines. Microsoft uses it for tracking and to improve the user experience. Shellbags are a type of registry key, but they also store user preferences. For example, as a digital forensics investigator, with shell bags, you can prove whether a user accessed a specific folder or not. You can even check to see if a specific folder was created or if it was available or not. Also, you can find out whether external drives and directories have been accessed on external drives. These are only a few examples, but there is a lot of information that you can acquire from shell bags that will help you with an investigation. The way a shell bag will be created depends on the activities the user performs, for example, like opening a directory, renaming a directory, moving a directory, or going to the control panel. Let's add a note before we get started. Shellbags are found in ntuser.dat. As well as in usrclass.dat. So, Shellbags can be found in these two registry files, which are found under the user profile. Let's go ahead and extract them from the beginning. Let's add our forensic image. Now, let's expand this, go to Root, and then Users, as it's in the user's profile. It should be in this directory. We need to select the user we want to investigate, which is Administrator. Now, let's go to Application Data and then Local. So, let's look at the main ntuser.dat first, which is a bit further down in this main directory. And here it is. Let's go ahead and right-click and export it. So this one has been extracted. Now, let's go to Local, and then Microsoft. Next, let's click Windows. And here we have the USR class. Let's also extract this one. These two files hold shell bags. Now, let's open the Shell Bags Explorer tool. I'm receiving this pop-up because there's no email address associated with this tool. Eric asks that you register your copy for one reason, so you can automatically submit GUIDs. This is helpful when you discover GUIDs and shell IDs for new evidence or new files and applications. Additionally, this will help Eric in his analysis of the tool. So having an email here is good. I'll go ahead and finish entering mine. Before we proceed, we can also add in a default time zone as well, which I recommend you do. I'll go ahead and apply one as an example. I'll use UTC-7. We'll prove this in a later video. I'll go ahead and click Save Now. Here we have the option to load the active registry, which will load the registry for the current active user. We don't want to do that option. Rather, we will select Load Offline Hive. Let's select ntuser.dat. Here it shows us that the user visited computers and devices, as well as these paths. So, it seems we can even figure out what remote locations the user has been visiting by analyzing the shell bags. And, we can see here when this was created, which is the date it was accessed. If we go here and click Labs, we can see that it was first interacted with at this date and time, and it was last interacted with at this date and time. We can also see that they are the same, and was interacted with only one time. A bit further down, we see the last access date and time. Let's now go ahead and load the other file.
When the parsing is complete, we get a pop-up that lets us know that 40 shell bags were found and that the GUID control panel is 4, root folder is 4, the directory is 26, and that the drive letter is 2. Let's go ahead and check it out. Let's expand my computer. Here we can see that there are two drives, E and C. The E drive was visited for a directory called FTK and another called DVWA. We'll come back to the C drive later on. Let's now go to Computers and Devices. We saw this one earlier. Let's go to another directory the user accessed, which is the Documents under Shared Documents folder. Here we have the control panel. We can see that the user accessed the system, network connections, network and sharing center, and user accounts. Under User Accounts, the user may have changed their password. And we can check this information here under the Details tab. Let's now go back to the C drive. I want to show you something quite interesting. When we go to C, we see all of these directories. If we go to XAMP, we see additional directories were accessed. If we go to htdocs, we see three directories, new folder, dvwa, and xamp. Now I'd like to demonstrate an awesome feature in shellbacks. A new folder can be created by simply right-clicking and adding a new folder. Typically, after that, the new folder is renamed from new folder to something else. So, how will we know which one is the newest file? We can find that out from various ways, but one of the most interesting is through the file system and MFT entry. If we go to New Folder and look at its contents below, we'll find the MFT entry number, which is 12,859. Now, if we go to DVWA and look at its details, we can see that the MFT entry number is also 12,859. What this means is that the new folder was renamed to DVWA. This is very useful, especially when you want to analyze and discover what the folder was named and what it is currently named. This can be done by checking shell bags. As you can see, there is a lot of activity that can be analyzed and extracted. We have several export options. Let's select the TSV option and export it as that format. And here, we can see the export details. From here, we can take this information and add it to another tool for analysis. Or, perhaps you have a specific kind of analysis you want to do, or you have an Excel sheet application or viewer that you want to import this into. Shellbags are very useful and could be helpful to you when investigating user activity. For instance, shellbags will be created when a user adds a removable device, or access a remote machine, which we saw earlier. Another example is when a user extracts or accesses a compressed file, like a zip file. A shell bag will be created for that too. There are a lot of user activities that will create a shell bag. And looking back at Shell Bags Explorer, we can continue to review these details to get an idea of the user activity. We can even sort the information presented to us by shell type, icons, etc. We can even sort by time, allowing us to know when something was created. Shellbags Explorer is an extremely useful tool that was created by Eric Zimmerman. He even provided a legend that explains what each icon means. And this concludes our video lesson on using Shellbags Explorer. After viewing this video, you should have an idea of what to expect when dealing with shellbags and the type of information you can extract from them. Thanks for joining us.